Can this season just end, please? Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving my final thoughts on the Buccaneers' loss, 20-12 loss, I guess I should say, versus the Baltimore Ravens. The Buccaneers are now 5-9. and nine. It is impossible for them to go at least 500 or above. That is 100% impossible, which is unfortunate. And also, the Buccaneers were officially eliminated from playoff contention in this game, which, great. I mean, we didn't really have much of a shot anyway, but... It is what it is. It is what it is. You know, it. I guess, you know, I guess we just have to look forward to these last two games. Enjoy the ride. What ride we have left here of the Dirk Cutter era, because he's probably not coming back, guys. Um, and yeah, it was another frustrating loss, but what can you do? I've, I've become pretty, uh, pretty stone hearted with this team right now. So it is what it is. Let's get into it. We'll look at the Buccaneers team first. And honestly, all things considered, I still thought the defense did a good job. They had a couple of missed opportunities here and there. But early on, I thought they did a good job of containing the run game and actually forcing the Ravens to punt the ball. Then everything went to hell. But, you know, that's beside the point. Uh, they were really doing a decent job of containing the run. And they even got a couple of sacks on Lamar Jackson. Levante David, I think, had two sacks, 12 12 tackles, a fumble recovery, and maybe one other stat point to mention, but Levante David had a great game. He was the team MVP in this game, in my opinion. I thought Riley Below had a decent game, all things considered. He was filling in for Adarius Taylor, who I believe just had a child. If he did, congratulations to Adarius Taylor. Um, but it was a wet, slippery game out there. It was tough for anything to get going. It was a run versus run game, and the Bucks don't run the ball, so, you know, and the Ravens do. The Ravens are really good at running the ball, and the Buccaneers don't run the ball, so... I think that might have just, you know, that, that should have spelled what was going to happen then and there. Uh, Carl Nassib had another good game. I think he's on it. I think he's going to be under contract until the end of next season, which is great because I want us to keep him for a long time. And I want to see him and Jason Pierre Paul just kill it next year. I absolutely want to see that. That is a very encouraging thing indeed. So that's good. That's another positive. Carl Nassib, Levante David, Riley Below. I think they all had pretty solid games. The referees in this game were awful. They were absolutely awful. They had a lot of missed calls on the Buccaneers, be it offensive holdings. Um, or just anything else, pass interference calls, this, that, and the other, you name it, the referees probably missed it in terms of the Buccaneers, but of course they did, because it's the Bucks, right? Um, it was, it was rough, it was a rough thing to see, but, um, Josh Shaw actually had a fumble recovery as well, which, you know, I thought was kind of nice, shout out to Josh Shaw, I guess, um, but still, regardless of all the good things I just mentioned, this Ravens offense absolutely ran all over the Buccaneers. They had 242 total rushing yards. That's miserable. That's absolutely miserable. Gus Edwards, 19 carries, 104 yards, one touchdown. Kenneth Dixon, 11 carries, 48 yards. And then Lamar Jackson, 18 carries, 95 yards. Like I said, the Buccaneers, they do not handle scrambling quarterbacks well, and we saw that yet again. Uh, just Lamar Jackson killed us on the run. Also, Gus Edwards did as well, and Kenneth Dixon. You know, this Ravens team likes to run the ball a lot, and given the conditions, the weather conditions, as I'm saying, of this game, it totally figured for a running for a running team to excel, and the Ravens are a running team, so they excelled. It just it is what it is. It was just kind of like the perfect storm for them. Literally, it was the perfect storm for them. So shout out to them. They ran the ball on us. Like I said, we were able to contain it early on, but it eventually got to be a little bit too much. Um, like I said, first three plays, two punts and a fumble. That was good, but the offense didn't do much better because they punted three times in a row before they scored their first touchdown, which was unfortunate. It is what it is. But, um, you know, Marlon Humphrey had an interception on the Ravens defense, and they just kind of outclassed us in a lot of ways. Taking a look at the Buccaneers offense, and you know, the first thing I want to point out that was a positive is Peyton Barber. Peyton Barber had 19 carries, 85 yards, and a touchdown. That was probably his best game of the year, I want to say. I, actually, that's not true. I think he had a 100-yard game a couple of weeks ago, but this is one of his better games of the year. I thought he did good. Yeah, obviously, you didn't get the other running backs involved. Cough, cough. Ronald Jones, maybe? Your second-round draft pick running back? But no, why would you get him involved, right? It's not like it's raining, slick wet out there and it calls for a running game now nah, why would you use multiple running backs for a running game i mean it's not like it worked for the ravens at all at this game but i digress 
Uh, Jameis Winston did uh, okay, given the circumstances. 13 of 25, 157 yards, zero touchdowns, one pick. Not a good stat line under any circumstances. I'm not saying he had a good stat line, but I will say his wide receivers dropped the ball a little bit. Mike Evans, uh, Adam, I don't think Adam Humphreys had a drop, actually. Mike Evans, I believe, had a drop. Cameron Brait had a drop, and Chris Godwin had a drop as well. Uh, that wasn't good. Chris Godwin's past two games have not been fun. They've not been good, but I also disagree with people who say, well, uh, we obviously need Deshaun Jackson. I don't agree with that. I want to say that. <laughs> I actually want to make a point to say that. I don't agree with that. I still don't think we need Deshaun Jackson. It is what it is. He did some good things for us this year, but I still don't think we need him moving forward. That is what it is. Anyway, um, like I said, running game was good. Mike Evans had your usual four catches, 121 yards. The play of the game was when Jameis did his usual scramble around thing that he did uh, with the Bears, I believe, last year. He scrambled around a little bit, threw a crazy pass. It connected with Mike Evans for 60 yards. Besides that one play and Peyton Barber doing his thing, this was not a good game by the offense yet again. But, like I said, the conditions. But, obviously, being a Florida team, you should be able to overcome their the conditions. But... I guess it doesn't really matter at this point, considering how Dirk Cutter is pretty much going to be gone. I think I, we can sign that one off, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But just looking at the drive chart here, this was the Buccaneers' drives in this game. Punt, 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 touchdown, field goal, so that's good. Punt, field goal, interception, turnover on downs. There was a little bit good there, but there was a whole heck of a lot of bad. Especially in the second half, they only scored, what was it? They only scored three points in the second half. There you go. That's... <laughs> All right, I guess, I, you know, whatever. It is what it is. The season's winding down now anyway. A lot of stuff's going to be changing, I imagine. So, you know, it is what it is. Let's just see some guys do some good things out there. Hopefully they play Alex Kappa more. Hopefully they play Ronald Jones more on the offensive side of the ball. I don't really see that happening because Dirk Cutter is not going to care. Honestly, Dirk Cutter should just resign now because he probably doesn't care anymore, nor should he, because uh, he probably already knows that his job is done. But... You know, maybe we can see some improvements on the offensive side of the ball. See some things to look forward to in these last two games. Defense, I still think, is doing a wonderful job. But now it's funny, isn't it? As soon as the defense starts doing good, the offense starts falling off. Because, of course, they do. We're the Buccaneers. It's, it's funny. I'm not even mad anymore. Like, I'm not as mad. I'm just kind of like, eh, it's, it is what it is. Uh, another positive, Cairo Santos made both of his field goals today. There was one where it hit anger right in the hands, and it just flew out of his hands. That was not good. I think that was on an extra point, I believe, which... You know, that is what it is. That was more Anger's fault than anything. Uh, Caro Santos, you know, he bounced back. He bounced back strong. He didn't really let this whole kicker's curse thing get into his head. He was able to bounce back, have a solid game. So I guess that was a positive thing. So Levante David, Riley Bullo, Carl Nassib yet again, um, Peyton Barber, Mike Evans, and Caro Santos. Those were your positive. There wasn't much else besides that facts <laughs> those are literally facts i'm um, looking ahead to these last two games they play the dallas cowboys and then the atlanta falcons uh the dallas cowboys they are probably going to be a playoff team the atlanta falcons they were already eliminated from the playoffs as well so in these last two games what do i want to see well let's hope that james winston finishes strong because he's going to be our quarterback next season uh, i think that's pretty much set in stone at this point um definitely want to see more of ronald jones because whichever new coach comes in I think, I hope that they give Ronald Jones a legitimate shot at being a feature running back for this team because I really think he could do a good job. See a little bit more of Alex Kappa because right now uh, I really doubt that Alex Kappa is going to have the same emergence that Ali Marpet did. Um, but hopefully he plays a lot in these last two games and can change my mind because I really don't want to see Caleb Beninock anymore. And then on the defensive side of the ball, I don't know. Let's get Carl Nassib more sacks. Let's get Jason Pierre-Paul more sacks. Let's get Gerald McCoy more sacks. Um, let's try and get Levante David into the Pro Bowl, I guess, just by his amazing play. It probably won't happen, but who knows. Um, and let's see Car Carlton Davis and MJ Stewart, I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I really don't know, guys. There's not a whole lot left. And let's hope that Cairo Santos can keep on doing some things and maybe we can have a kicker next year or may have him be our kicker next year. I don't know. There's not a whole lot left to talk about uh, for this season, especially for these last two games. So, meh. 
I don't know. Let me let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. What did you think about the game? I know the referees were really bad in this game, but what did you think about the inept offense? What did you think about the defense doing their job? They did really well in the passing game, but they really sucked in the running game. Kind of a switch. It's usually the reversal, actually. They're really good in the running game. They really suck in the pass game. But this time, it was different. So what did you guys think about all that? Let me know down in the comment section below. I guess I'm going to have to start making a lot of off-season content, and I'm sure it's going to start with potential head coaching replacements for Dirk Cutter because it's over. Um, the Glaciers have already started collecting information on head coaching candidates, which, like I said, that's why Dirk Cutter should resign because, geez. And then also, uh, DeMar, they asked DeMar Dodson today in a press conference, uh, press conference type thing, like, well, uh, what do you think about fighting for Dirk Cutter's job? And DeMar Dodson said, I'm fighting for my own job. I'm not fighting for Dirk Cutter's job. It's every man for himself out here. Which, ooh, that's a sign of the end times, my friend, if I've ever heard that. I was hearing that around the Greg, the end of the Greg Schiano era, let me tell you. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. I'm going to be pumping out some off-season stuff now, so I hope you guys will enjoy that. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. But until then, guys, and as always, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.